Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and back to another Build Like a Nerd. This has been quite a while since we've done the last one of these, so hopefully I haven't forgotten too much. Today we're talking about industrial as residential, and I specify residential because I would love to do an industrial commercial lot at some point as well, especially with some other packs. Thank you so much, Kyra, for bringing this up uh, not once but twice, or Kira, I'm guessing. I do apologize if I get that wrong, but... Yes, industrial is a fantastic style. I've been looking forward to doing this one for a while, so thank you for keeping it fresh on my mind. Industrial design takes a lot of inspiration from the late 19th and early 20th century factories and sometimes literally takes over them, reclaiming the unused space. It incorporates a lot of brick, iron, steel, and concrete with a ruggedness designed to last for years. The style could be called borderline unfinished as there's often exposed ductwork and rafters and a lack of paint and decoration. The industrial interior design style is also keen on reclaimed and repurposed materials. The color scheme is generally monochromatic and any colors will be earthy and often muted. I do recommend checking out the linked Pinterest board for lots of great interior design inspiration. I have heard you, and while I cannot commit to doing full interiors for these videos for time reasons, I can at least give you that. While most of the industrial spaces we may be familiar with from sitcoms or HGTV are reclaimed factories, warehouses, firehouses, and so on, there's also been a huge element of industrial design added to contemporary constructions. The two styles play well together as they focus on clean lines and natural finishes, although contemporary is more new, aesthetically oriented, and industrial is focused on feeling historical and used, but still useful. So I'm actually building in Magnolia Promenade today. I'm starting on a 20 by 30 lot. Now the base of our build is just going to be a really big rectangle. This is the easiest way to do it. And of course this is a beginner friendly base game only tutorial. So pretty much running with easy. But of course, if you wanted to add more, I would recommend checking out that Pinterest board with all of the reference images and see what sort of shapes you like, things you'd actually like to add on. So I'm starting one tile away from the edge and I'm going to go up 11 and then to the right 14 and add another little four tile box off to the side here. This is actually going to become a pull through garage and page up and draw another big box. Now your base wall height can be medium or tall depending on sort of your preference. I'm going to go with medium today and then your top wall could be short or medium, possibly tall, uh, but you'd want a pretty big build to, a pretty big build to be able to handle that. Uh, this build is not large enough for that. I also built this too far forward on the lot so I'm going to scoot it back. Not quite to the halfway point, a little bit before that. And this is pretty much the exterior. Now inside what we're going to do is draw a whole bunch of walls to split up the spaces and then you can decide how many of those walls you want to keep. So I'm going to start five tiles down and just draw straight across. Then this space will be a five by five either bedroom or extra space and a little bathroom down here. Now across from this wall I'm going to go down two to the left one and then down four. This little nook I would use as an office um but Basically, it's just a little bit more dimension. And then to prep for our stairs, in line with this, but one tile away, so right here, we're going to add a nice thick little column there. And then on the second story, I'm gonna start with another five by five bedroom with a three by three sort of walk-in closet and then a smaller two by three bathroom. In this corner, I'm doing three by four closet area, three by four bathroom, and one more wall right here. Next up, grab your fence. Now to start with, I'm just going to use this because we'll talk about style and everything in a little bit. But take this fence, start in line with this wall. You're going to go down three tiles and then over three tiles like so, and then remove the floor over here. So this will be a lofted area with sleeping spaces upstairs and another potential sleeping space downstairs. Now, if you already have sort of a story in mind for your build, you're probably going to want to start thinking about how to do these interior walls. Your exterior walls, they'll be brick inside and out uh, for the most part, unless you want to sort of clean things up a little bit, put some plaster on top of them. But the interior walls, if they are original, you'll keep them brick. If they aren't original, you may want to use some paneling or stucco or something that will show that they're added. And if you maybe don't want quite so much wall space, you can go in with a spandrel. Now, because this is base game only, I'm going to be using the budget spandrel, but other great options would be the zigzag fabric factory spandrel from the werewolves pack or something from seasons or cats and dogs that just looks like a solid beam of wood and if you don't want it all the way across you can hold alt and just place it on one wall at a time or again just click on the whole wall all at once now i'm going to add this smaller spandrel for sure to either side of my little walkthrough garage here and remove the floor as well this will prep the space for garage doors and same with upstairs. If you want this to have a more open feel uh, like I do, I'm going to open up the dressing rooms instead of having doors separating them because really we want really tall walls and a quite open floor plan. And the last thing I'm going to add before we start putting down lights and whatnot are stairs. Once again, I'm just starting with some basic stairs. So if you take these, you're going to pull this arrow down, then pick up your stairs, turn them around and place them just like this. 
those will line up really nicely with that little fenced in area that we just made. And now your floor plan's done. We'll go back inside in a minute, but of course we should finish up the outside first. So for the outside of your build, uh, bricks, stones, pretty much anything that you'd see on a factory in your area or whatever area you're basing this off of. In my neck of the woods, it's pretty much red bricks. Once again, Werewolves has some really nice distressed bricks, so that would be a great pack to use for this. City Living also has excellent industrial features. There's even this one from Get Famous, which is pretty good, but I am just using the base game, so I am going to use ah, the Brickery Elite. I'm still going with red, but this is sort of the uh, most dark and dirty swatch that we have. And you're pretty much going to do the whole thing with brick. Now, if you have some sort of outbuilding or office or a separate entry point, uh, you might wrap that in some steel or something else. But for the main hub of the factory, you know, fire prevention, use brick. Now, as far as the roof goes, we have a lot of options. So let's move through them. You could just keep whichever one you like best. So the first one, you could just grab a hip roof piece, bring it over the whole roof and just pitch it down. Add some dark trim, maybe make it metal. And there is a very basic sort of industrial style roof. Not very exciting, but simple and gets the job done. If you want it to look a little bit more interesting, you could work with a gable roof piece, again, pitch it down quite low and tuck those eaves in. Now you're going to take separate gables and run them crossway, crossways. And then you would line up your windows under those little peaks. It's just a little bit more interesting shape. Speaking of interesting shapes, you could also take a half gable roof piece now we'll have to do some math to make sure we divide this evenly, but we've got 14 spaces. Well, two tiles it is. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to drop it down about like that, then hit copy, shift to place multiple at the same time. They might not all line up on the first try. And I believe this style is called sawtooth because it almost looks like little teeth on a saw. Now, if I was going to stick with this one, I would probably pull some of the eaves in, either all of them or just these lower ones, again, depending on sort of the vibe that you like. And this is a great roof to actually line up and show some of the ideal roof textures for um, an industrial build. Metal is fantastic, which there are two base game swatches of, as well as the Get Famous and Island Living. Eco Lifestyle has a couple of great options as well. And if you wanted to, wanted to do a more updated, renovated looking industrial build, uh, you could grab some solar panels. Now the Werewolves pack, once again, has some great options. This one, in fact, has some sort of clear plastic pieces in the roof, which is actually pretty common to see. Um, to get more light in on the factory floor, you'd have some sort of glass or other see-through material on the roof. So there are some options. You could also take your platform tool to just draw a flat roof, add a little platform, go down here to grab your platform trims, grab something with a little bit of an overhang like that, or this one, and color in the top. Now, if you like the flat roof, but that's a little bit too short for you, I recommend trying half walls. Use one of the first three or four half wall options and just draw a, draw a rectangle right on top of your build. I do like using the half walls because then I can take the same wallpaper and just cover it like that and then grab some half wall trim. I'm going to be going with black today as my sort of accent. Moschino, of course, has fantastic windows. There are these taller ones, the square ones, and the semicircle or quarter circle, rather, sorry, ones. So those are really great options if you have that pack. Of course, there are those werewolves windows. Uh, some factories, depending on when they were built, of course, might actually have some of these Art Deco style windows as well. I've seen some of those in my area anyway. And if you want it to feel more updated and contemporary, you could go with some windows from the new Growing Together pack or eco lifestyle. Now these would definitely not be original windows, these would be replacement windows, but since most of these industrial style builds are really old warehouses, factories, fire barns, and so on that have been reclaimed and repurposed, uh, it's totally reasonable to think that a few windows would be replaced. But now, of course, for best base game picks. If you really prefer smaller windows on your factories, you could go with the classic Octopane in white, black, green, or whatever other color you like, really, it's your house. Personally, I'm going to be going with this one. This came in the update with the Industrial Loft Kit, um, which, by the way, if you have it, would probably be really good for this build. I don't have that kit, I'm just assuming. I mean, this the whole point of this build is that it's renovated, so you can pick pretty much whatever window you want, but if you end up going with something too ornate, like this, or too soft, like a big old circle, it's not going to look as industrial anymore, so use elements like that sparingly. Now we do want to turn on Move Objects. I'm gonna use Control shift c bb dot, move objects. It's all four trigger buttons on console, by the way. And because I'm going to be using these larger windows, I'm going to space them evenly so that I have three on my lower story and three above. 
If you had smaller windows, or even with these windows, you could have more, you could have less. Totally up to you. And I'm going to mimic this placement on the back. Now you might notice that my window is interrupting my stairs, or the other way around. That is totally fine. These stairs were most likely put in after the fact, so yeah, stairs crossing in front of windows and so on is totally fine with this style. Which is weird, because usually you avoid that, but it really adds to the charm for this one. Now if you want windows on the sides, you could of course add those as well. I might add a couple over here, but I don't think I'll be adding any on the other side. So now we've got a good amount of natural light coming in, which is very important. Really, if you wanted to, you could probably even put another window here. If you like that sort of thing where light is flowing through multiple rooms all in a row, this is a great style for that. Now let's talk about the little garage. I'm going to start with a half gable roof piece and rotate it so that it is facing out. Get rid of both of these eaves and these, and then pitch it all the way down and bring it down to only one tile wide. I know this looks silly, but if we hold shift and just pull this eave out to about there, and grab a glass roof texture, all of a sudden it becomes a lifted glass garage door. Still looks kind of funny, but I'm going to grab the beveled out roof trim and another platform, and if I bring this platform up two levels, there's my garage door. I think it's fun. So then I will copy, rotate, and place that same roof piece on the back. And now I have that little walkthrough garage, this would be a great place for a car, I suppose, bikes, uh, tools, a bar, so many things. Now because I ended up going with this roof style on my build, I'm going to do the same thing down here, but pretty much whatever roof you did up here, you'd probably do a similar one down here. While we're looking at the roof, I'm also going to grab a darker concrete to put on top. And there's most of the outside done. We'll come back to landscaping, of course, but at this point, this is about it. Oh, I suppose we do need an entry point. I'm going to put my door here. Now, same thing from windows is really if you have eco lifestyle, like these two doors, werewolves, werewolves again, Werewolves again, Moschino, maybe even Batu, maybe even this get together door, get to work. What I'm saying is you have a lot of options here for doors. Uh, something big, glass, probably tinted glass if you can, metal, something like that, great options. You might be wondering why am I not using werewolves for this build? It's a good question as I haven't done a werewolves video yet. I thought werewolves would be really fun to use to go over how to actually um, make builds actually feel old and broken down because there is a little bit of a, a pattern to it. So I thought that would be really fun to go over with that pack. So that's why I'm not using it here. Um, also, if it can be base game, I like to make it base game. And it can be base game. Look at this. But let's move inside. I'm going to grab the same bricks and use them for my interior walls. Now for the floor on the main level, concrete is definitely going to be the most authentic. However, you do not want to leave it at this concrete because your sims will complain they will only accept the concrete that you pay for. But you have a lot of options. We've got the high style concrete, which has some marks on it, which is really fun. Another slab of concrete, which has some stains. I wouldn't go with anything with slabs, uh, but the high end concrete, again, has some really cool staining effect on it. Tried and true definitely looks old. Now on the second level, you could definitely go with concrete again, but if you're trying to tell the story that the second level was added later or more modified um, or didn't have equipment on it, you might want to go with wood instead. I like using the rustic slub <laughs> rustic subfloor slats. Um, I think those are fun. We also have the antique wood flooring. Again, how old do you want this to feel? How new do you want it to feel? Pick a flooring that goes with that. Let's finish talking about this loft piece while we're here. Now this fencing isn't very exciting. At the very least, I want something black. Now I, you're not going to believe this. Werewolves has a fantastic industrial fence. I know, who could have seen that coming? This one from high school years, again, pretty decent. You could go with something glass as well if you, again you wanted to bring it in the more contemporary direction. That would work really, really great. Get to work fence is fantastic as well. It really has that old factory feel. But today with just the base game, I'm going to use... This one, the narrow slatted fence, because it comes in a solid black swatch and isn't too terribly distracting. What is distracting though is this bit of white here, so grab this button over here, pop over to your inlaid exterior trim, and grab the black swatch once again, or I guess if you're not using black for your main color, you can use something else. And since this room doesn't actually touch any exterior walls, we're safe to just place it. But if you ever wanted to place it on just one wall, you'd hold it up where you wanted it and then hold your shift key, and this will place the trim on only one wall. Next up, the stairs. You're not going to believe this, but once again, werewolves. <laughs> Fantastic. Get to work even better. Why is my window gone? I have move objects on. Anyway, um, but I'm using neither of those packs, no matter how perfect they may feel, because we can come back to this later, and I'm just going to use this ladder style uh, staircase from 
the base game. For interior doors, same deal as exterior doors. If you have some of the packs that have that more industrial stuff, again, uh, Eagle Lifestyle, Vampires, not Vampires, <laughs> very much not a Vampires build, Werewolves, um, and so on. You could definitely use those. Maybe even this one. This definitely looks like a like an office door. But I am going to go with... You know what, I'm just going to sort by base game because that way I actually remember where the doors are. Like I know this one's on the side. Uh, I'm going to use the plain wooden door. I'm using black, but I thought it'd be kind of funny to actually use the bathroom door for the bathrooms. Um, because like maybe, maybe you left that door in in your renovation or something. Um, that just, that feels funny to me. So I'm using the bathroom door for the bathrooms. It's been so long since I've recorded one of these. I like barely even remember what order I usually do things, but I think we're doing okay. Next up, according to my cheat sheet over here, is the kitchen and then the bathrooms. And then we move back outside. I guess that's what I usually do anyway. So let's talk kitchen. I'm going to tuck my kitchen in here because it's really handy to have it against some full walls. Now as far as industrial cabinets go, the base game does actually have probably the best option, which is this vault modular counter. So I'm going to grab a swatch that I like. I'm running with a lot of black, so I'm grabbing this one. I'm going to skip this spot and grab an island to place here. Now this side has a little back trim on the cabinet, this side doesn't. The easiest way I have found to sort of break that up is to just let it um, be interrupted, basically, and then you don't have to worry too much about overlapping or not, or taking another piece and then, you know, adjusting it ever so carefully to fit in there, and no, we're just going to interrupt it with a stove. Now I'll put my fridge over here. The vault modular set also has some really nice upper cabinets, so we can place some of those. I do like this fridge in particular because you can actually put your cabinets right over it, which is fun. And if you click your little gear thing here, you can actually select end cabinet pieces manually, which is fun because that sort of breaks up all of that closed face front. So that'll just break that up a little bit, which is fantastic. And we can grab one of the more industrial looking stove hoods as well. Put in our sink. And there's a nice little kitchen. This way the kitchen is open to dining, dining is open to living, but there's still a little bit of privacy around these two areas. Again, depends on how you like to play. If you really wanted to, you could probably put a pass-through window here. That would be pretty fun. Now, and speaking of all these big open walls, this is probably the best time to break into some of the vampires. Um, sort of wall destruction decals. Again, werewolves. Or those old cats and dogs, sort of worn down posters. Some of the get-together graffiti. Again, werewolf stuff. Um, this this is just a great opportunity to use some of those decoration items where you wouldn't usually get to use them all that much. But again, dining, living. I would probably use this for a bit of an office space, maybe laundry, something in here. And this one is just going to be a little half bath. Now what I'm concerned with with the bathrooms is really just simplicity. Nothing too over the top, although if you wanted to do some exposed pipes like the retro basin sink, the DIY sink, those would be fantastic options. For the base game, I'm going with the raw pedestal sink because it kind of sort of matches my cabinets. And the world's most basic mirror. And for this little bathroom, I'm going to do my standard uh, small bathroom setup. Tub or tub shower combo on one side, toilet and sink on the other. Is it exciting? No. Does it work? Yes. Can you decorate it? Absolutely. But this one is a little bit bigger, so maybe we give them some nice things. So there's the kitchen and bath done. Time to move on to landscaping. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, um, if you're going to hang lights in this area, you'll want to turn on the grid and hang them on this level so that they're not just sort of floating. Uh, case in point, let's, you'll work. We're gonna grab this one, right? Looks great, it's actually hanging from the ceiling. Now, if I move the grid down, it's going to be hanging from nothing. Now, could you add a beam there? I suppose, uh, but if you don't wanna go through the top trouble, just don't bother, put your lights on the floor above. It'll still work. Now for the roof and the base game, we do have a few things. We've got some units like this. We have a drainage pipe, a um, little vent thingy. Uh, Get Famous has some really great uh, pieces as well. So that's fun. You could totally use those. If you have city living, you could put a billboard on top. That's really fun. This actually has quite a few different swatches for different locations, shows, all that stuff. I think it would have been really cool if they'd use this to sort of tease more of the packs. Um, but yeah, that... That's a fun little detail as well. Now I'm gonna start with my landscaping in the front and I think I'd actually like a secondary exit point. I'm going to put mine here. I'm going to remove this window, grab the same door and place it here because I wanna have like a little courtyard thing. So I'm gonna grab half walls again and bring this out pretty much to the end of the lot. Now if we wanted to, we could get rid of a couple pieces over here, have like a little entry point there. And I'm going to delete this floor as well because I'm going to go in with the sidewalk slabs flooring 
and if I place it straight on the ground all the way across, we're not going to have any issues, but if some of it is in a room and some of it isn't, we're going to have weird little lines in the ground, uh, kind of like this line, except worse, so we're not doing that. And believe it or not, I'm using the exact same bricks once again, and that same wall trim as well. Now this is pretty boring, but generally speaking, you're not going to see a lot of grass or a lot of space for yards and buildings like this because they're often in areas that are pretty heavily developed. But if you'd like to add some plants, you can grab the platform tool and actually sort of create little raised beds, uh, almost like a controlled grassy area like this. So if you have like dogs or whatever, you might want to do that for them. I like using the knock on wood platform that has the little vertical slats because uh, it kind of looks like planter box sides. And then if you grab the miscellaneous um, textures, you can use dirt. Or if you go into the outdoor one, you could put down grass. And that's just like a nice little green space. And then you could also add, of course, grills and tables and chess tables and all that stuff. But in the grassy beds, you're most likely going to see them just grass or more contemporary landscaping or possibly like a small vegetable or flower garden. Really, you can do whatever suits the personality of your sims. I think I'm going to add a couple of plants, but also a fountain just because I think that's fun. And I'd also like to add a little pergola. So how I'm going to do that is turn my grid back on and grab the smooth keeper fence. Again, I'm going to use black and then I'm going to start at the corner of the build and just start drying out. And once I've had this whole area closed in, I can delete the floor and go back in with my fence to create whatever design I think would be fun. Now, if you're wondering if there's a cheat code to placing these faster, there's not because they're all individual rooms. So you can't really copy and place them. Almost done. There, nifty. Next, I'm going to grab my exterior trims. I'm going to use simple exterior trim again in black and place that all along the edge. Now, because I've chose to do a pattern with a bunch of tiny little sections, this is going to take a little bit of patience. And now I'll want to add some columns to support it. Eco Lifestyle has arguably the best column since it's simply an I-beam, although Werewolves has a pretty good, more old fashioned wooden beam. City Living has this more concrete looking thing. Get Famous has a decent concrete beam as well. Werewolves also has this beam. Again, Eagle Lifestyle coming in clutch. Get to work. Basically, a lot of great options. None of them base game. So for us base game people, I recommend this square column. Again, specifically in black, it has just enough detail to be interesting, but not so much detail that it's obnoxious. You can space these however you want. I'm choosing to do it like this. And now we have a nice little courtyard that feels pretty private, um, even though it is very much not. And then you could do the exact same thing in the back, leave it as it is, maybe add a pond or just a patio sort of open. One thing that this little garage area is really good for would be a trash can. If you have eco lifestyle, the dumpster would be fantastic, but for those of you who don't, just a normal trash can is fine. And we don't really have any good industrial mailboxes, except maybe this one from Snowy Escape. So I'll stick with this. Now, depending on the area, you might even want to just cover the entire lot in concrete to make it look more integrated, totally up to you. But if you do have any grass showing, you're definitely going to want to use some terrain paint and add some dirt. Use a small soft brush and just start painting under anything that touches the grass. Now, I actually haven't been recording for as long as I thought this would take, so I'm going to use a little bit of my extra time here to show you one of my favorite sort of industrial uh, landscaping things. It's not really landscaping, it's a pool, but it's a specific way to add a pool. So grab your pool tool and you're going to make a little three by five or three by 10 pool. I'll be going with three by five because it's adorable. Make sure your wall height is set to short and then grab the corrugated metal from Eco Lifestyle or the panel to the metal, basically vertical metal paneling. Hold shift and just paint your whole pool with that. Grab the corresponding floor and now you have a shipping container pool. It's not really a detail I don't think most people would really recognize, but it's a lot of fun. Also, if you wanted to create an addition using shipping containers or something like that would be a really good option. But yeah, that's about it for this build. Let's take one last little style pointer tour and then I'll let you guys go. So starting from the outside, most industrial builds are renovated from old factories, warehouses, fire barns, and so on. So you're going to see a very, very boxy shape and generally a heck of a lot of bricks. Window size and position will vary based on what you're actually building from and your personal tastes. Overall, the floor plan will use a lot of open walls. You could open the walls, but still show that they used to be there by using spandrels. And throwing down a couple of these thick columns is fun as well. There will almost always be a lofted space. Now you could even open this up even further. I saw several floor plans um, and examples where there weren't even walls between rooms, but given how much Sims love to sleep in each other's beds already, I felt like this was the wiser option. 
Landscaping tends to be pretty minimal since these are generally in very urban areas and don't really have a lot of grass, but if you do want to add grass and make it look like it was planted after the fact, I recommend making some little platforms for it. This build is on the gallery if you'd like to take a look. As always, those details are in the video description down below. If you missed the last Build Like a Nerd video, highly recommend checking that out. That will be in the card up here, and down here is a video that YouTube thinks you will enjoy. But for now, thank you so much for building with me today, and I look forward to building with you again very, very soon. Bye!